Hi, my name is Axel and today I'm going to show you how quickly you can get started writing a ELM single page application with the Rust server and the backend. We're not going to use any other JavaScript tools like NPM or any other build tools. We're just going to rely on Cargo for the, for the Rust part and the ELM compiler for the front end part. So to arrive there, we're going to go through these uh, six steps. We're going to call Cargo init to start with a Rust project from scratch. We're going to add the XM library for our HTTP server. Then we're going to create a folder for our static assets and dump in a, a boilerplate index HTML in there. Then we're going to add the, the routes in our Rust server to actually uh, serve these files. And then we're going to start with an ELM application from scratch as well. And that's a point where we are compiling the M application. Hopefully everything's wired up and the thing just appears in our browser. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's create a new folder for our project here. Make dear Elm Rust and enter that folder and do the good old cargo in it to start a new Rust project. If we do cargo run, this should give us the good old hello world. There we are. Uh, okay, so now we have an empty Rust project. We cannot do anything with that really yet. So we're going to head over to the XM documentation, XM docs. Uh, duh, duh. Example sounds good. Going to throw this in here and just open the main RS. Uh, that's the wrong editor. Boom. Replace that. And when we save, we already see it's complaining about a bunch of things like the XM not being defined here and other th and the Tokyo main neither. So I'm just going to bring up a new console. Go into our folder again, Rust Elm, Elm Rust. And we are just going to add Exum. And we need Tokyo as well, as it said in the documentation. So we're going to cargo add Tokyo and with all features full, I believe. So let's see, cargo check. First compile always takes a bit longer because it has to download and compile all the dependencies. But the following compilation steps should be a lot faster. Can have a look how oh, this looks here. Well, the LSP has not caught up completely yet. It compiles cargo run. On which port are we starting the server on 3000? It's running, so let's open a new tab on localhost 3000. Hello world. Perfect. Okay, let's kill the server. So the next step, what did I say? Add XM create static assets. Okay, so awesome. Um, Rust. Let's call that folder www and let's open an index HTML in there. Index.html. Let's call Google for HTML5 boilerplate. Looks like I've been here before, so that's great. I'm just going to grab this, paste this here. And what I want to do is when we call uh, the the root index, the root route slash on our web server, I want to deliver that file. And because for single page application, you, you hardly ever edit this file. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to read the content of this file at compile time and just include it in the binary ourselves. That means if we ever change this file, then we have to recompile to get it, but that's usually not a big problem. So let's go back to our main. So instead of hello world, we want to actually deliver this index HTML. So maybe let's first, I think it's something include still rust. This looks good. Mm -hmm. Provide a path. So let's try that. I actually, um, I think we only need a comment.
constant here. Let's put it in here. Const index HTML. We have to give it a type because it's a constant, so it will be a and static str, I believe. And this has to be relative to this file. So we go up one folder into the www folder and then it auto completes actually to the index HTML. That is great. And I wonder if I can just smash that in here. Index HTML, cargo run. That compiles. Let's go back to our web server. Boom, and there it is. Ah, but it's giving us a, uh, the result as plain text. So I think there is something in Exum. Let's, uh, there's also an examples folder in the Exum repository actually. So let's look at that. Exum examples. There's also hello world here main rs and you see these they are actually returning this and it's also a bit nicer to have a dedicated handler handler for the index route let's call that index and here we are going to put in the what did i call it index html and where does html come from Response HTML from the Exum module. Going to throw in that in here. And maybe we actually write something in the body. Hi as HTML. Cargo run. Boom. Refresh. Hello world. Hello world is not what we wrote. So I'm a bit confused. Three, where does this come from? Ah, because I didn't actually call the handler here. Okay, let's change that. Index, cargo run, refresh, high as HTML. Awesome. In the HTML, we are already including a style sheet and an index JavaScript. So that's our, those are good starting points. Uh, they don't exist yet. So here we should actually see, yes, we see the 404s for those files. So let's create those. And the way I want to have them on disk is in this www folder, I want to have an assets subfolder maybe. I think that's a good idea. Let's just go with that. Assets. Uh, make dear, what? Make dear www assets. All right, let's create a styles. What is it called? Style CSS in there. Uh, assets style.css. Let's say all the text in body should be color red and now we have to add this to our routes basically and in the exam examples folder where is it there is also an example for static file server and there's a lot of things going on in this example with tracing which is nice um, for production ready stuff where you want to really see all the requests that are happening. But for now, we are going to do it very simple. We're just going to steer this line here that actually allows us to serve a directory. And now we have to bind it to a particular route. Or actually we don't, we just say fallback service. And so everything that is not our index HTML will actually be tried to be served from this surf deer. The surf deer comes from a different crate called tower HTTP. So we have to do to add this as well. 
If we look here at the example, we see it's in the dependencies with two features. We don't want the tracing for now, so we're just going to add it with the FS feature. Cargo add um, features FS. Cargo add features FS. Cargo add tower underscore HDP features FS. Wonderful. Let's go back here. Smash in the import statement. Just going to steal that from here. So this guy, line five, oops, that's the new one. Don't need that. Wonderful. Well, actually, we don't need this or this or this or this. Only want the surf, dear. All right, so let's see if that compiles. Cargo run. It did not because why open in network panel? It doesn't want to serve this guy. Ah, because here we actually again have to do this relative, or oh, not relative to the source, but relative from where we start the server. So this should look better. There's our, and it's red, awesome. All right, so that means the, the Rust server is basically done. So what I'm going to do next is bootstrap a new Elm application. Let's call the folder frontend Elm init. Yes, we want an Elm JSON. And I think we don't really have a module just yet. So let's create source main.elm. And we're just going to go to the Elm guide and steal the hello world example from here. Boop, boop, boop. Paste this here. Whoops, just once. We have to export tell it how we want to call this module and we're just exposing everything this looks good um, make and then you give it a path to the what you want to compile and then with hyphen hyphen output you can specify a location and we want this to go one folder up in the www folder in the assets folder as index.js that compiled. So let's, uh, so our stuff is still running, perfect. You can just refresh and now we should not see the 404 for the index.js at least. So that worked out great. It's now the index.js is actually loaded. You see it because it tells us the Elm compiler or the compiled Elm uh, code tells us it's compiled in dev mode and we should not deploy this to production, but the actual application is not visible. And that's because we have to tell it how to embed it in the current page. And there's a section called JavaScript interop. And you see it, we just did this step where we compiled the, uh, the Elm program into a JavaScript file. And now we just have to embed it uh, in our HTML. So we are, so that's the only JavaScript we are going to have to write for uh, hosting this Elm application. Um, mm -mm. Where's our index HTML? It's here. Just going to pop this in above here. And because our module is actually called L, a main, which is the, the identifier we're referring to here, this should actually 
work out of the box. So I'm going to save this, go over here, reload, and it doesn't work. Why does it not work? Ah, uh, because I changed the index HTML, so I have to recompile my Rust server. Takes only a second. Boom, and here is our single page M application. So I want to show you which files we actually edited or out of which files our project consists. So I'm quickly going to add some files to the gitignore, which is namely the target folder where the Rust intermediate compilation products are stored and uh, Elm has something similar, front end Elm stuff. Those are both folders that we don't want to check in. And we can use the tree command to call it with the git ignore parameter, which will then also not show files that are ignored. And so here, those are the actual files that we need. Cargo log and cargo toml are the files uh, for our Rust server, which contain our dependencies. The front end contains our main application and the dependency file for, for the M application. Then we have our server and the main RS and our little file with the, with the folder with the static assets here. So that's all you need to start going, getting your own sing, single page application running on Rust and Elm. Um, yeah, and I hope that helps. Bye.